My name's uh, Andy Wheeler. I'm the, the Vice Head of the School of Biological Earth and Environmental Sciences, Sciences and I'm the Acting Head of Geology Discipline within that school and I'm the Chief Scientist on this expedition. We, we had a very challenging expedition. It was a, a voyage of, of discovery, uh, very much so. We set out to discover uh, a new hydrothermal vent field. Um, so we went 1,500 kilometres out to sea, way, way out in the Atlantic. We couldn't have really got further away from land, right to the very center, the middle of the Atlantic, uh, where the plates are pulling apart, where the seabed is cracking open and Europe and America are pulling apart. And then when we got there, we, we sent a rom robotic camera system down to the bottom, three kilometers down to the bottom of the seabed onto an active volcano, where we discovered, after a lot of hunting, we discovered this new hydrothermal vent field. And what I mean by that is this is where um, seawater is being pumped out through the volcanic edifice. It's a bit like um, it's a bit like geysers on land, or geysers on land, I should say, um, like Old Faithful in Yellowstone Park. That's where rainwater is pumped down towards the magma chamber, then it gushes up as a big explosion of water. If you have the same situation on the seabed, the amount of water pumping through these systems is so much greater. And the water comes out at about 350 degrees C, extremely hot and full of metals that it's picked up from the magma and from the, and from the rocks that it's had to pass through. So it comes out really, really hot, full of lots of metals, extremely toxic, but eventually actually fertilizing the ocean, replenishing metals in the ocean, making ore grade metal sulfide deposits and also supporting quite intriguing and strange life forms as well. In 2008, um, the National Oceanography Centre um, in the UK had an expedition out looking at the, vol the volcanics going on on this ridge. And at the end of that expedition, they caught a trace in the water column, a very faint trace in the water column of these so-called black smokers, the plumes off this hydrothermal system. Um, but they ran out of time and had to go back. So through UCC's collaborations with the National Oceanography Center, um, they contacted us, they contacted uh, myself and Professor John Gamble in the geology discipline in the School of, of Bees, um, and asked us if we could get a ship, if we could go out there and launch an expedition. So we did. We applied for funding from the Marine Institute. We supplied the vessel and the ROV. We planned the expedition. It took a lot of planning, a lot of work. We pulled a team together from UCC, from NOC, from the University of Southampton, from the Geological Survey of Ireland, and also NUIG. We set out uh, at, on this expedition, picked up that signal in the water column again, and then traced it down to source very efficiently and effectively. It usually takes about a week to try to try to box in and find these, these vent sites. We did it in, in two days, which is very impressive. Uh, everyone was impressed by that. And to put it in context, the vent site's about the size of a football pitch, uh, three kilometers down. Uh, and we started uh, about 20 kilometers away and sort of fought these, found these face, faint chemical signatures, worked our way down to the seabed, eventually dove on it, and then within two hours, we bumped into the, the, the black smoke in the water column and we struggled down even deeper, pretty much just about beyond the capacity of the ROV. We really pushed it and we struggled down to, to 3,000 meters. It's a 3,000 meter ROV. People were very nervous. They said, we just got to go a little bit more, a little bit more, and then eventually we found the site. And then we spent the, the next week or so uh, mapping this site and investigating it really at the capacity of the ship and of the ROV. It was, it was a, a gigantic effort, uh, but we pulled it off and we're delighted.